Welcome back guys, it is thrift flip time. Let's go ahead and get started. We are going to be starting out with this pumpkin fall arrangement. It's super cute to begin with, but I'm just going to do a little bit of updating. To start, I'm going to take some gold metallic paint and do a dry brush method, which just means I'm not going to take a ton of paint on my paintbrush. I'm just going to basically put the paint on the tips of it and rub it all around. All I'm wanting to do is give it that metallic gold hue kind of shine to it to match the colors of the florals in this arrangement. From there, I'm just going to add a few more florals and pick out any of the ones I don't like, and that includes these cute sunflowers. Now, I will say this material was a little tough to puncture, so I just used a safety pin to pre-puncture a hole, and then I added flowers anywhere that I felt it needed to be filled or um, necessary to add a pop of color. I also added in a cute little berry stick and that was all I needed to do with this. It's super cute and I'm very happy with how it turned out with these few updates that I made to it. And I would love to know what you guys think in the comments below. Next, we're going to work on this cute little vase. I found it and it was giving me pumpkin vibes. Um, I think it's super cute, but I just wanted to add my vision to it. So I'm going to go in with some chalk paint. Chalk paint will stick to virtually any surface. You just might have to do a little work. For me, I just cleaned up this vase and went straight in. Now I am using a rougher um, brush here that will allow me to put on a decent coat of paint on here, but not a super thick one and not necessarily a smooth one. I want those br um, like bristle textures in here. And I don't, like again, I don't want a super heavy amount of paint, but I do want to cover the entire surface. If there's a little bit of white showing through, not too stressed out about that, but I want to make sure that the entire thing does get coated in this orange paint. So I'm going to do that on the bottom and then on the top portion and including that rim inside so that if you are looking down at the vase, you don't see where the paint starts and where the paint stops. So once I have done that, I'm going to move on um, to the leaf and then like the little vine that's wrapped around on this piece. And so for the leaf, I'm going to be using the color sage. I'm just going to go in with a smaller version of that rough bristled brush. Um, these are technically stencil brushes and I'm going to brush all over that leaf. I want to cover it completely in this um, sage color. Again, if there's little peaks of white coming out, I'm not too stressed about that. I'm just going to make sure it's fully covered and then um, you'll see what we're going to do with it afterwards. Next, I'm going to go in on that vine portion, and I'm actually just going in with some white chalk paint, which might seem silly at first, but I just want that texture of that chalk paint to be on there. I want the whole um, vase to match in its texture, and so now when you see me come in with this Waverly Antiquing Wax, it's going to cover that entire thing and not have any weird slick spots, and the texture of that white paint is going to kind of absorb it and turn it into that brown vine that I was looking for. For this, I'm just going to use my watered down Waverly Wax, paint it on, and then blot it back off with a paper towel. I'm okay if my um, paint comes off a little bit because I want that white to show through, I want the colors to show through, and I want that brown color to come through. It's just going to give this thing a lot of dimension and pop all of those beautiful details that are on here that I feel like you really couldn't see when it was just white. I think it turned out super cute and I would love to know your thoughts. Next, we have this cute little grapevine um, broom that I found. It was originally made for like a spring decor, and I want to turn it fall. That's going to be nice and simple. I'm just going to cut off all of the old, dirty, um, rough looking florals that were on it, and I'm going to leave on the wire that was already there and just cut down and wiggle all of these different pieces underneath there. That wire is going to hold all of this in place and just allow me to kind of um, arrange it how I want to. Most of these florals are actually from the Dollar Tree. Um, they have some pretty cute fall florals that I like to get from there. And you just see me, I'm just going to place everything where it needs to go, including some cute um, sunflowers that have a lot of color in them. Well, a lot of color, <laughs> a big bright um, orange and yellow. 
I'm gonna then use some burlap ribbon in just like a brown in this orange that you see and I'm going to attach it to wrap it across to cover all of those bottoms of the stem. You see me here I put hot glue on those stems too just to kind of hold them in place to make sure they're not gonna slip out and I'm gonna wrap that around glue it and then I'm gonna make a bow. I am using both of these and so I'm just gonna make it the length that I want. I'm gonna put them both folded over and you're gonna see me here pinch it in the center and then twist it. So what I'm doing is I'm putting that orange ribbon back on top. So um, I'm just going to then fold it back over itself and do this until I have as many loops as I want for my ribbon. So again, fold it over, put that orange back on top, um, then I'll you know, line it back up, pinch it in the middle, twist it one time to where that um, burlap you know is on top right now but whenever I flip it back over the orange is on top because the orange is the one that I want to be on the top on how I've layered it so you can do this um, with when you have multiple ribbons you can do it if you have a one-sided ribbon um, this is how you get your pattern to be back on the top so if you pretend that orange burnt color is the pattern if this was just one piece of ribbon flipping it like that would put that back on top that way your ribbon is not inside out once you've made as many loops as you want, you just cinch in the middle. I'm just using some wired jute from the Dollar Tree to cinch it down and then wiring it together and starting to pull out all of those loops. I'm just going to, because I do have two different colors or two different ribbons, pull them opposite of each other for each layer. That way the colors aren't just bunched up on one side. And then I'm going to use that excess um wired jute to attach it to the broomstick. You can use a pipe cleaner, floral wire, a string, whatever you have on hand. I'm just going to cut off the excess and glue it down just to make sure that it doesn't, you know, unwind and that that jute doesn't come unraveled from that wire. And then I'm just going to fluff the bow, bow and put it in to the position that I want to. I'm using wired ribbon makes it really easy to position it. Um, but I have a combination here and the wired ribbon kind of um, holds that other ribbon in place even though it doesn't have a wire. I think this turned out super cute. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Next we're going in on this cute little wooden um, recipe book holder that I picked up. It is in really good condition and just super plain, so it's a great blank canvas for me. I'm going to start by sanding it down, getting any of these pieces um, or like un like there was like a little spot on it, getting that sanded off, clean it up, and we're just gonna go in with that Waverly Antiquing Wax, and we're going to um, apply it all over. This wax is slightly watered down, and I'm just going to um, paint the entire surface of it, and then once I'm ready, I'm going to take a paper towel and wipe away any of the excess. I'm gonna let that completely dry, and then I'm just gonna add this really cute sunflower transfer. I do have these linked in my affiliate links. You can find them on um, Amazon, but I actually bought these from a booth in a vendor mall that I like to uh, um, visit. So I'm just going to kind of lay it out where I want it to go, center it up, and then you're just gonna um, take off the backing, lay it down, and use the stick or a credit card or any kind of flat surface to rub that transfer off. You're going to know that it's transferring because the colors will go kind of grayish and dull. And that just is showing you that it is um, sticking down to the item that you're working on and coming off of the sheet. If you have an issue with it not sticking, just lay it back down in the exact spot and rub a little bit harder and then it will come off. And it's a pretty easy um, process, but sometimes you do have to, um, you know, push kind of hard. For this one, it did give me a little trouble, so I just had to rub a little harder. And once it was all transferred on, I just used some polycrylic and sealed it in. They do need to be sealed, and polycrylic is a really good way to do it because it is a water-based. I love how this recipe book um, holder turned out. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Last and not least, I have this cute little washboard like plant holder or key holder, wallet holder, whatever you want it to be, but it was in rough shape. So I needed to clean it up and also um, kind of disassemble it and re-put it back together. It was not structurally sound whenever I picked it up. So I'm just going to move off this face plate and tighten down any screws and then hammer in any of the little like bride nails on the side that need to be secured so that this thing will be nice and 
and secure and last for years to come, just with a little bit of love and fixing up. From there, I'm going to go in and I'm going to start giving it a paint job with some white chalk paint. I am doing this just to freshen it up, hide any of those nicks and scratches that it might already have. Um, just the dingy kind of look that it had. I think somebody just spray painted the front. They didn't even bother to do the back. So I went ahead and painted the entire thing, including inside that little... Um, like box portion and the back just to have a nice clean slate and then I went in with some Waverly wax you may think that was a wasted step but for me it was important just to know that it was a nice clean fresh slate so again same process this is um watered down and I just paint it on and then it, I do it in sections paint it on and then wipe it all of the excess off and I'm going to do this all over the entire thing including the back to make it all cohesive and look like it's always been this way and then I'm going to go in and add some more transfers these transfers can also be found in my affiliate links in the description and I'm going to add these on the front and on the top I think these fall transfers are gorgeous they kind of have like a dry floral or like fall floral vibe to them and I think with the antiquing wax and the colors and everything it definitely screams fall and I am obsessed with them currently so I'm just going to again lay it down get it kind of centered where I want take off the backing lay it down start rubbing it away and getting it transferred and then once it's ready and good I'm going to seal it in with some polycrylic I didn't show me applying it to the top but that's the little transfer I used and I am obsessed with this piece as well Again, I know you're probably sick of hearing it, but I love to hear about what you guys think about the pieces that I create. So I really hope you give me a thumbs up and a comment below on which item was your favorite. I'm going to take you in for a closer look and I'll see you next time.